Are you visiting Venice for the first time? Well, if so, you've come to the right place. Well, the right video, right? Yes. Because today we're going to tell you all you need to know about visiting Venice for the first time. We live in Italy and we visit Venice very often. And for this reason, we thought uh, we could share with you all of the tips that we've learned from our many trips to Venice. We're going to cover when to go to Venice, how many days you should plan, how to get to Venice, where to stay in Venice, how to move around in Venice. And, and what to eat in Venice. Yes, absolutely. And of course, be sure to stick around to the end because we're going to cover some of the things that you must see on your first trip to Venice. The, some tips to make your first trip to Italy even more memorable. So, we have a lot to cover. Let's begin. Hi everyone, I'm Rick. And I'm Andrea, your host on this channel, Travel Addicts Life. Today we have great news, but before we start the video, we wanted to share that the Italian Ministry of Tourism invited us to be part of the community of travel professionals. So, you can trust us with our tips for traveling to Italy. Yes, and you know your mom has shown this to every single one of them. Everyone. everyone. <laughs> Today we'll tell you all you need to know about visiting Venice for the first time. But first, if you like travel-related videos like this one, now is a great time to the subscribe button down below so you never miss any future videos. Yes, absolutely. That is 100% great advice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's begin uh, our list of things to know about visiting Venice for the first time. And we'll talk about when is the best time Loving. to visit Venice. So when is the best time to visit Venice? If you are flexible on your plans with Venice, we strongly recommend you not to go in the <laughs> summer for several reasons. Reason number one, the summer in Venice can be quite hot and very humid, and it's not the ideal climate to visit. In fact, the average temperature in June, July, and August can reach peaks of 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit with a lot of humidity. However, in recent years, it's occasionally hit 40 degrees Celsius and over, so which is yeah, not very not pleasant, pleasant at all. Exactly. Also, the summer is the busiest time of the year in Venice, right? Yeah. Uh, with tens of thousands of tourists flooding the city every single day. In the summer, uh, the city is packed and prices for flights and hotels are the highest. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, if you can avoid the summer and pick another time to visit Venice, we think you'll have a much better experience. Absolutely. In our opinion, the best time to visit Venice is early in the spring or in the late fall. In fact, at the beginning of April or mid-October, the temperatures are much milder and the number of tourists will be a lot less. Yes. Also, during those months, hotels are going to be also less busy, and prices will not be as high as they are in the peak of summer. But wait, what if you can only go in the summer? What should you do? Mm. Well, in that case, we recommend you to book your hotels way in advance to score better prices and book fully refundable rates in case you change your plans or you find a better rate. Mm -hmm. Also, if you're visiting in the summer, you should go out and explore early in the morning and late in the evening when the temperatures are cooler and the amount of tourists that are visiting Venice just for the days left the city. Mm -hmm. If you must go in the summer, try to avoid going to Venice on weekends because those are even more busy than usual and exactly. you will not have a good experience. Right, so moving on to our next tip about visiting Venice for the first time, and we're going to talk about, well, how many days should you stay in Venice? So, for your first visit to Venice, we recommend visiting for at least three full days plus one day for travel. Yeah. So, in fact, 
this city has a lot to offer, right? I yes. Mean, and three days, we think, is the minimum amount of time to see the entire city, to explore the best of it. And with three days in Venice, you have the time to plan a visit to the beautiful islands of Murano, that's famous for glass blowing, and Burano, which is famous for its charming, vividly colored houses and, of course, the lace making. By the way, we recorded an entire video about Murano and Burano. It's right up here. It's really worth checking out. Another very important thing to do when planning a trip to Venice is to buy the Skip the Line tickets in advance for the most popular attraction. This is especially important for the Doge Palace and the St. Mark's Basilica. Mm -hmm. These places are going to be super busy between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m., so try to visit right when they open or an hour before they close, so that there won't be as many people around all these places. Exactly, and you'll get much better photos doing it that way as well, right? So the Doji Palace, in case you don't know, was the palace that the rulers of Venice used to govern the city. Inside, you're going to see that it is super opulent. In fact, I think our house should look like that. Um, you know, frescoes and all of that kind of stuff. And of course, you'll also find the Bridge of Sighs. And the St. Mark's Basilica is the main church in Venice where St. Mark's remains were brought back from Constantinople. It's also super ornate with all of its gold mosaics. It's beautiful. Uh, I think that would be also good for our shower. But anyway. <laughs> so naturally, everyone wants to visit these attractions for their first time in Venice. And these lines to these places, well, they can be really, really long. Yeah. And if you only have three days in the city, you don't want to be wasting your entire day waiting in line, right? And you will if you don't buy the tickets. Exactly. So if you'd like to support the channel, we'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below for the best Skip the Line tickets in Venice. And you won't pay any more for it than you would online. So let's move on to our next topic about visiting Venice for the first time. And we will talk about how to get to Venice. Hmm. If you arrive in Venice directly from overseas, chances are that you will arrive by plane. Mm -hmm. Venice has one main airport called Venezia Marco Polo. The airport is located on the mainland and is served by major European airlines and some low-cost airlines as well. There are flights from every major European cities and Italian city and to the Marco Polo airport. Also, there are some non-stop flights to Dubai, Istanbul, and Tel Aviv that land in Marco Polo Airport, mm -hmm. Venice. The Marco Polo is located on the mainland, as we said before, and it's very well connected to the city by the Vaporetto Ali Laguna, which is the equivalent of the public transit in Venice. You can buy the Vaporetto tickets at the automatic machine at the terminal or online before departure. From the airport, there are two Vaporetto lines that will take you into the city center. So the Vaporetto Ali Laguna Orange Line takes you to some of the most popular stops, such as Fondamenta Nuove, uh, San Marco, uh, the Rialto Bridge, and of course, the train station. The Vaporetto Ali Laguna Blue Line takes you from Marco Polo Airport to the island of Murano, uh, Lido, and of course, San Marco Square. Um, and the train station. <laughs> so if you're headed to Piazza San Marco, you can take either line. Yes, remember that we visit Piazza San Marco after dinner when the, the water was uh, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, that's what the Venetians, Venetians called Aqua Alta. Um, it's not so common anymore thanks to the Moe system, but it does happen from time to time, mostly in the winter. And after a glass of wine, or three, on this particular <laughs> night, I decided to go for a swim in the Aqua Alta. But I digress. The Vaporetto is probably the most convenient and cheapest way to reach the city center from the airport. At the time of the recording, a one-way ticket costs 15 euros, while a return ticket costs 27 euros per person. And they run from 5 a.m. to 12.20 a.m. daily. By the way, it takes about one hour to get from the Marco Polo Airport to the Rialto Bridge on the Orange Line, and about one hour and 20 minutes to get to San Marco on the Blue Line. The link for pricing and the timetable, well, we'll leave that in the description below as well. 
Another option to reach Venice from Marco Polo Airport is by water taxi. Mm -hmm. This is a private boat that takes you right to your hotel. Now, this is the most convenient way to reach your hotel from the airport, but it's also the most expensive. Mm -hmm. At the time of recording, the option, this option will cost you about 140 euro per boat, and the boat is up to four people. Mm -hmm. Now, Venice also has a secondary airport, Treviso Airport, that is mostly served by low-cost airlines. Oh, yeah, actually. Uh, in fact, I flew into this airport way back in 2004, and um, it's tiny, inconvenient, and I don't think I'd fly back there because it's so far from the city, right? Something must have changed since 2004. Who you, knows? Think, you think they moved it closer? I don't know. The Treviso Airport is located near the city of Treviso, which is famous for Prosecco, and it's about 41 kilometers north northwest of Venice. You see, it's far. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To get to Venice from Treviso, you can take a bus that takes you to Piazza Ale Roma, which costs around 12 euros at the time of recording. Also, you can take a public transit, public bus, to Treviso train station, and from there you can take the train to Venezia, Venezia Santa Lucia, which is the main station in Venice. Mm -hmm. More about that later. Prices vary according to the time of the day and the class of service. Mm -hmm. Lastly, you can take a taxi to Piazzale Roma, which will take about 40 minutes, and is priced by the meter, so mm -hmm. we don't know how much it would cost from yeah. Treviso to Piazzale Roma. Yeah. Maybe, maybe ask the taxi driver in advance, yes. right? Now, if you if arrive in Venice from any other Italian city, you'll most likely arrive by train, bus, or car. In fact, our favorite way to get to Venice is by train. And Venice is very well connected by trains from every major Italian city, in particular um, Milan, Bologna, Florence, Rome, Naples, they're all really well connected to Venice. Now, the main train station in Venice is Santa Lucia, and it's right on the Grand Canal. This train station is a walking distance to Rialto Bridge or Piazza San Marco. In front of it, there's also several Vaporetto stations that can pretty much reach every area of the city. Now, as we said, we live in Italy and we normally travel to Venice by train, so we recommend you to do that as well if you have that option. Now, Venice also has another train station in the Mestre area on the mainland. This is not the correct station to go if you plan on visit the city, especially if it's your first time in Venice. But if you do happen to find yourself, by mistake, at Venezia Mestre for one reason or another, well, you'll want to get to Santa Lucia on the Grand Canal. And you can take the local train and you'll reach the city centre in about 10 minutes. If you arrive in Venice by bus or by car, you will arrive at Piazzale Roma, which is the only place in Venice city centre that can be reached by car. In Piazzale Roma, you will find some huge multi-level parking and several bus stops. Mm -hmm. So, if you drive to Venice, you'll be leaving your, the car at one of these parkades. Right. At the cost of about 45 euro a day. So just be aware of this, <laughs> yeah. right? And of course, if that's your plan to park in Venice, um, you know, maybe you'll be driving in Italy. And if that's the case, we strongly recommend you to reserve the parking in advance because they get sold out, especially in the summer. Absolutely. And if you want to know more about how to get to Venice, we recorded an entire video about it right up here, and you can watch it. Okay, so moving on to our next tip about visiting Venice for the first time, and we'll talk about where to stay in Venice. Yes. For your first visit to Venice, we would recommend you to pick a hotel as close as possible to the city centre, to avoid wasting time commuting back and forth from wherever you are. However, hotel in the city centre can be a bit pricier than the one located outside of the city centre. Mm -hmm. Stick around and we'll tell you how to get a better price on this. Mm -hmm. Ok, so let's explore the most popular areas in Venice where you can stay. The first area is the Canareggio district, called Sestriere in Venet Venetian. This is a pretty big area with a lot of hotels, so we'll divide it up into two subdivisions. Mm -hmm. The first subdivision is by the train station Santa Lucia, not the Mestre one. This area is very strategic because it's very well connected with, by Vaporetto to pretty much everywhere in Venice. Mm -hmm. 
It is, it is also less expensive than most of the other areas in Venice, but the downside to this area is in the fact that it can be really, really busy. Mm -hmm. In fact, this area of Venice is the main hub of the city, so every day tens of thousands of tourists pass through this yeah. area, so yeah. you have to cope with this. And the other area around Canareggio, let's say it's a little bit off the beaten path, um, is around the historic Jewish ghetto. And this area is very quiet, and hotels here are also very well priced. And uh, it's still within walking distance to St. Mark's Square and many of the other areas and attractions that you're going to want to visit in Venice. In this area, you'll also find a lot of small restaurants that serve local food, especially for lunch. On the other side of the canal, you'll also find the San Polo and Santa Croce areas. And these two areas are still a very good option um, if you're looking for hotels that are affordable and in a quieter area. Next up, we have the San Marco area, and this is... This is my favorite area because it's the most it's where the most luxurious hotels are located here you'll find the best that venice has to offer especially um if the hotel is right on the grand canal right however if you're looking to save a few euros um look just a few blocks away from the grand canal and you'll still be able to find some great hotels with a lower price tag that are still in a wonderful location yeah. For example, remember last May, yep. we stayed uh, very close to San Marco, it was a five-star hotel, and we paid about 250 euros a night. Including breakfast. It would, right, and that was still a very good price for the time. Of course, a three- or four-star hotel will be a lot cheaper. Yeah. The next area that we are going to explore is the Castello area. This is the area near the historic shipyard of Venice called the Arsenale. In this area, there are not too many hotels, but it's still a great place to stay within walking distance from St. Mark's Square. Lastly, in the city center, you have the Giudecca and Orsoduro areas. These two areas are a bit far away from St. Mark, and the Giudecca in particular will require Vaporetto commute to reach the, all the main attractions in the city. So we do not recommend staying here if you can avoid it. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's your first time in yeah, Venice, right? Absolutely. There's much better areas to stay for the first time. Now, last, if you really want to save some money, um, I mean, I, I love a good deal, right? Um, you can stay on the mainland in Mestre. Here you'll find many budget-friendly hotels, but remember, you're going to have to take the train or the bus to, you know, to reach the historic city center. However, the trade-off is that you'll often find hotels in Mestre around 100 euros a night, yep. that's it. And like we said before, be sure to book your hotels as far ahead as possible, and make sure to book a flexible rate that you can cancel before. So you know, you never know, you might find a better deal, your plans might change, who knows, right? And also, get a hotel that offers a free breakfast. That way you can bulk up in the morning and have a nice dinner and maybe a little snack or a drinky along the way. And a gelato, maybe. Oh, yes, absolutely. Moving on to our, with our next tip for visiting Venice for the first time, and we'll talk about how to get around Venice. Mm -hmm. That's a very, very good topic. There are essentially three ways of moving around Venice. Walking, taking the Vaporetto, or taking a water taxi. Venice Historic City Center is a very walkable city, and you can reach most of the attraction by walking in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. We strongly recommend you to walk as much as you can in Venice. To explore all the beautiful and amazing little piazza, calles, which are Venice's typical streets, and bridges. When you're tired of walking, or if you want to visit other attraction or other island in the lagoon, you can take the Vaporetto and reach them in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Vaporetto is the Venetian equivalent of a city bus. Mm -hmm. There are several, ra several routes, and they are very easy to navigate. We strongly recommend you to buy a Vaporetto Pass that covers the whole stay in yeah. Venice. That way, 
if every time you want to jump on the Vaporetto, you can hop on and... Yeah, you just tap you your card and it lets you, you in and, uh, and, and away you go, right? Yeah. Also, riding the Vaporetto on the Grand Canal is probably the best way to see all the most amazing buildings in Venice, right? Mm -hmm. and, and don't forget to ride the Vaporetto along the Grand Canal at night when... You know, you see all of the lights shining on the buildings yes, and, and, yeah. the, and maybe even the moon. It's really, really nice. And lastly, you can also take taxis in Venice. But, you know, remember, taxis in Venice are really expensive and you'll need to book it um, to or from your hotel or go to a taxi stand. And by the way, we've never, well, I've never taken no. a taxi before, but maybe we will one day. Now... If you have mobility problems um, or challenge and require a wheelchair, uh, you might want to know that you too can still visit Venice. The municipality has designed some special itineraries just for wheelchairs. However, given the fact that Venice has 435 bridges linked to 121 islands, it's going to be difficult to see a lot of it. So at least you'll be able to see the highlights. Also, Vaporettos have special ramps to allow wheelchairs on and off. So we'll leave a link in the description below for a complete map and instructions regarding visiting Venice in a wheelchair. Absolutely. It is important to know that there are several public bathrooms in Venice. Oh, yes. For you to use. <laughs> there are signs for the bathroom around the city, and the cost of the bathroom at the time of recording is a euro fifty. If you don't have any change, you can ask the attendant at the bathroom to break a bill for you, and they will do yeah, that. Yeah, or, or best yet, always carry change with you, right? Now, no visit to Venice would be complete without a ride on the gondola. These are those long black boats uh, which you can take, and they will give you a tour on the Grand Canal. Somewhere else. Or somewhere else, right? Exactly. They might take you to the back roads. Yes which are those little canals in Venice and are, you know, super cute. Now, if you're just looking to check the box and say you did a gondola tour, you can take a gondola ferry, which takes you from one side of the Grand Canal to the other for about three euros, and it's all done in about 10 minutes. You can take a selfie. Exactly. Post it to Instagram or whoever, and it'll be shared, of course, with other people. Uh, if you want a private gondola, expect to pay more, but you can get a more customizable trip for, you know, what you want. One thing you probably won't be able to do <laughs> is drive the gondola. Remember that time? Yes. Andrea and I visited Venice the day after the COVID lockdown, and there was nobody in the city. So what did I do? I went, I offered the, the driver 50 euros if he'd let me drive it, and sure enough, he did. But hey, ask nicely, and never you know. never know. And of course, we will link. Uh, we will leave a link in the description for some of the best gondola rides as well. All right, so let's move on to our final tip for visiting Venice for the first time, and we'll talk about what to eat in Venice. Mm -hmm. Like any other place in Italy, Venice has its own special dishes, and it would be a shame if you want if you visit the city without trying some of the typical food in Venice. Being a city near the water, Venice has an incredible tradition of seafood dishes. Some of the most famous include crab, squid in pasta, and bacala, which is salted cod. Actually, in Venice, is dry cod. Mm -hmm. Also, Venice is famous for cicchetti. These are the Venetian equivalent of tapas, but don't call them tapas, no. it's mad of you, which are served mostly for lunch. You can choose several different cicchetti, and they cost about euro fifty each, with seafood, meat, or vegetables, and they enjoy them with a great glass of local wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the white wine, right? Yes, this is probably the best way to have lunch in Venice. And then check out the local gelateria, because, well, you are in Italy, and Italy has the best gelato yes. in the world. Yes, I've eaten, the gelato. <laughs> I've eaten gelato all over the world, and let me tell you, Italy is the best place. Also, when in Venice, you have to enjoy the local wine, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes, the famous Prosecco is the local wine of Venice, and it comes from the hills that surround the Venetian lagoon. And if you'd like to have an aperitivo in Venice, you should also try the local version of the spritz, which is not made with Aperol, but with another liqueur called Select. Uh, it's dark red and slightly bitter. 
Also, for finding the best restaurants, stick to the non-touristy ones, right? The local restaurants. These restaurants are not going to have a big view, uh, and they're going to be far less expensive, and will offer the most authentic, delicious, and local food. Absolutely. Well, folks, this is our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something about visiting Venice for the first time. You know, there's some one thing that I think we forgot to mention. Right. If you want to get the most out of your first trip to Venice, um, consider hiring a local tour guide to take you around. This can be a great way to see the entire city and for all that it has to offer. Remember? Um, our last guide, she showed me the smallest road in yes. Venice. It was so cute, and I could touch both of the walls. And you'd probably never know this if you didn't use a guide. And of course, they tell you all sorts of so much more information than that, right? As usual, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. We love to answer your question the best we can. In the meanwhile, we will see you on our next video. Ciao. Ciao.